What up, what up on the incomparable Diesel Greasel. Uh, we're going to do a little something different. You know what I'm saying? I'm sitting here with a young man I met a couple of weeks ago uh, at our mic. You know, um, he's a young up and coming comic, uh, but he's much more than that. You know what I'm saying? So we're going to take some time out of the day on this Sunday and get to know him. His name is Deshaun King. You know what I'm saying? That's your real name? That's my real name. That's a dope stage name, too. Uh, and so um, this is going to be a little all over the place, but I just want to get to know the young man and, and see, you know, uh, what we have in common and see how I can help him and how he can help me. You know what I'm saying? I know uh, he probably wondering what the hell's going on, but I think it could make for some good, good entertainment as well as uh, just a good perspective. Uh, so uh, how old are you, man? 26. 26. 26. Okay. And where are you from? Originally from um, Colorado Springs, Colorado. And how did you end up in Texas? Ended up in Texas. Um, I have my mom, my brother, and my sister who live down here. So um, as soon as I graduated from college, I decided, like, oh, I'm moving to Texas. Okay, so when you were in Colorado, were you with your, your dad or some other family members? Or? I was with my dad. I okay. was with him when I was 11. And then okay. after I graduated high school, I went down to this school called... Um, Colorado State University Pueblo, so it was like 30 minutes away from Colorado Springs. Okay. Awesome, awesome. And so, for the majority of your childhood, it was just you and, and your pops? So, it was vice versa. So, my folks were in the military, but okay. they Both? split when I was only a couple months. So, okay. half my childhood, I split with my mom and my brothers. Half of it, when I was 11, I split with my dad and his uh, current girlfriend at the time. That's pretty dope. I mean, you got to see both sides of it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Which side was your favorite? Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's a tough question, huh? Yeah. Tough question, man. But it's dope that you got to spend a good amount of time with both sides and get to know them both individually. You know what I'm saying? So uh, you are a teacher? Originally, I'm a, what I call a paraprofessional. So okay. I just help out with the special needs programs. Okay. You know, making sure they're taking care of, that you need any help with any work. But, you know, some of the kids still say I'm like that teacher mentality. So I'm like, yeah. I'll take it. Yeah, I mean, you you every day you're doing the work, you know what I'm saying? So, um, how long have you been doing this type of work? This would be my first, actually, I've been working with like special needs and kids for like a long time. So, my first job back in 2015 was like YMCA. So, I work with all types of like regular ed, you know, special ed. And then um, I transcended into like work teaching like sports, coaching, you know, middle school, high school, elementary, so it just kind of flows. Okay, okay. So are you passionate about special needs or passionate about children, passionate about both? Is that kind of what it was? Or At first, you know, <laughs> when, uh, when I first got the job, I see, I'm like, hey, it's better working at fast food because, um, <laughs> and then um, at first it was a struggle, but then I'm like, you know, sometimes these, these uh, the kids really get on their skin, you know, you're, you're like, you want to see these kids like you know grow up and be successful you know want them to achieve greater you know be better than you know um everything else in life you know what i mean yeah so what would you say is your favorite part of your job the um that's a good question there's like a lot okay i mean but it's good that you like a lot about your job Okay, so what would you say is the one part about your job that you really don't care for? I wish the teachers get paid more. I mean, hey, I think that's very valid. That's very valid. So we're going to change gears a little bit. Um, so how long have you been doing comedy? That I started, um, it was just a little thing back in like, uh, I think 2016, 2017. Okay. So this was uh, something you new. Know, I was in college. I'm trying to figure out what else I can do because my major was communications. Okay. So I did radio. I did broadcasting. Um, I did like um, announcing. So I did everything. But in my same sense, I wanted to explore some more. So and I forgot what year it was, but I saw on this post on Facebook saying Christopher Reed, aka Kid from Kid and Play, mm -hmm. is doing comedy. I'm like, hold on, Kid is doing comedy. <laughs> so I gotta see this. So I went up. I met him, and then okay. uh, it was actually good. So then in my mind, like, hey, maybe I should do some comedy. Okay. Or someone suggested it, and then I don't know. I, think I suggested it, someone suggested it. But then one day they had open mic. 
I did that. I got a few laughs, but then uh, I'm like, okay, keep it going. So how do I get people's attention? And then realizing that, you know, sometimes uh, half the things I did were funny and then half the things I did, you know, almost got me killed. So I'm like, you know what? I might as <laughs> well make fun of myself and get, get people's attention. Okay. Awesome, awesome. So um, would you say that comedy's helped you in any ways? Yes. Okay. Is it, is it like therapy? It is. You know? <laughs> it definitely is. Yeah. Um, when did you realize that you were kind of good at this? Mm, I like hearing people's feedback. Okay. Well, do you think that you're good at this? It's a slow start, you know. Okay. All right. I mean, I, I, I've seen you perform a couple of times, man. Um, you, you, you got some really good jokes. Like some of the jokes are really, really funny. Uh, uh, a lot of it is just the way you carry yourself, your persona, um, a lot of people are funny without even trying, you know, um, which is a gift. You know what I'm saying? Some people have to try to be funny, you know. Uh, and so at the open mics, man, I noticed that sometimes people like to make jokes about you, man. How does that make you feel, honestly, bro? <laughs> I'm the butt of everybody's jokes. So yeah. that's usually my, my routine. Like, I'm an outgoing person. Like, I'm like, hey, how y'all doing? But sometimes, you know, um, it's a little bit funny because the things I do, things I say, it's just like, boom, I'm like, it's just easy to, you know, pick up and make fun of. Okay. Now, you say that you're the butt of everyone's jokes. Are you okay with that? Or do you, like, you know, how, do, how does that honestly make you feel? Because at the last mic, you know, I fuck with you a little bit. Yeah, I was laughing. Yeah, I mean, you know, but, you know, I, I kind of fuck with everybody. But then I noticed that everybody was fucking with you. Oh, cool. So then I'm like, okay, well, I don't really want to fuck with him like that because everybody's doing it. But I'm just like, you know what I'm saying? Like, and then my Sia, she fucked with me a little bit, you know what I'm saying? But that's the nature of our business. Mm -hmm. Like, but like, you know, um, are you okay with being the butt of the jokes? I'm, or? I'm okay with it. Okay. Because uh growing up, you know, as a kid, yeah, I got picked on because, you know, a little bit of uh something, but it, it was a high school. It, it was like elementary, but then the more I got older, the more I realized that, you know what, I ain't gonna let it bother me. I'm just gonna say, hey, take this. Shut it up and you use it to my own example. Yeah. That's because dope. um I realized, hey, you know, um being a buddy by jokes, it means that hey, you know, if people laugh at because my old um my old teacher, um, in college, she used to say to me, like, hey, if we laugh at you, if we um if we pick on you, it means because we care for you. We want, we want to see you know grow and successful. And she said you're a good young man and you know, um, yeah, you do some stupid shit, but that, that's the good <laughs> person. That's a good person you are, that's your nature. Yeah. I mean, I think it's a lot of truth in that because I don't really mess with people unless I like them. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not going to just make jokes about a person that I don't talk to, that I don't feel like I have some sort of friendship with. You know what I'm saying? But I also know, like, you know, sometimes people can take it too far. Now, um, you know, I'm going to ask you a question. So are you, are, you, are, are you autistic? Yes, I am. Okay. Now, this is, you know, kind of what intrigued me, you know? Um, Cause I don't know a lot of autistic people or uh, black men, you know? Um, and so it's like, I didn't meet you in a special needs setting or anything like that. I meet you at a comedy club. Mm -hmm. You having drinks, we, we having jokes and shit. And someone told me that you were autistic. Um, and it's like, okay. Um, but I'm not really sure what that means. You know what I'm saying? Or how that affects you. I see, a young man trying to find himself in life doing comedy, you know? And so, but you have an alternate perspective. So growing up as a child with autism, were you picked on and bullied because people didn't understand? Or did you even notice? Did it even, like... It was kind of both. Like, people picked on me because I did things that they didn't notice. And of course, you know, I didn't even realize I was autistic until I was 11. Okay. So then I'm like, okay, so I kept it to myself most of the time because in my same sense, like during my past, I'm like, how are people going to react if I tell them I'm autistic? And, you know, the way I act, some people just, you know, knew, but yet they still mess with me because, you know, they still they still see me as a good guy. They yeah. still see me as the Sean and now, yeah, hey, you know, you have a disability. That don't mean I'm not going to change how I feel about you. Yeah. Awesome. So do you feel that you have a disability? I do because you know growing up I mean there's a few things like autism like um I am slow 
my anxiety kicks in, uh, my brain works differently than other people, and then uh, I, my brain's like a sponge. Like, if you ask, like, one of it is like my inter- love of entertainment. Like, I know, like, this day, this day, what episode happened this day, like, boom. Like, and then schoolwork, you know, I hated math, I hated science, but I was good at English, I was good at um, public speaking, and I was good at all the things. So, yeah, there's, there's a few things, you know, that come conflicts up at the time. It's funny, man, because you say some things like, um, you say that you're slow. I'm like, bro, I, I wouldn't consider myself slow at all. Um, I've had a few conversations with you. I wouldn't consider you slow. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's a lot going on up in there, man. So mm-hmm. I, I wouldn't consider you slow. Uh, you learn in different ways, obviously, right? Yes. Um, you know, I, I would say I'm the same way. I, I'm a sponge. You know what I'm saying? Like, I have a memory. I remember everything everything things i don't want to remember you know what i'm saying i can't turn it off um you know um i struggle with nonverbal communication is, is is that something that you you struggle with a little bit yeah i mean um i'm i'm good with words we can write all day text i'm good at that um even talking i'm okay with that but tone is an issue you know what i'm saying cuz i have a loud voice so the tone scares people and people take it uh, to mean uh, aggression and things like that. Um, and then a lot of people, they communicate in nonverbal ways, and I miss those cues completely. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm focused on the words and what the words mean. Um, so say that you realize that you were autistic at 11, um, and it was something that you didn't want to share with people because you thought that they would view you differently. Mm-hmm. That's tough, man. That's tough to deal with at 11. You know what I'm yes. Yeah. I mean, it's tough to deal with at 41. You know, I'm 41, you know. Um, and so tell me a little bit about what school was like for you, man. Uh, you know, high school, middle school, you know. Yeah, middle school, yeah, it was fine because, you know, I switched school like every two years. But by the time it was like seventh grade, I had a little rough time. But eighth grade, I managed to, you know. Uh, hey, establish myself like sports and you know hanging out. You'll treat people right, like, and then same thing with high school. Even though um, I went to Catholic school for two years, which made no <laughs> sense. <laughs> and then I transitioned back to public school, which eh, it's just high school, you know. <laughs> it happens in high school. Yeah, you meet friends, you lose friends, you do this, you do that. And I'm like, yeah, it's high school. But then college wise, everybody was accepting college wise. I'm like, hey, this is my hometown. This is like. Fresh to start, yeah. and I actually enjoyed my college years because I did everything. Like I had my face up on the school gymnasium. Wow! I did announcing, and then um, I did karaoke. But basically, yeah, I was like my, I was like the mayor. Yeah, <laughs> that's dope, man. Uh, that's dope. That I, so I'm not, must have been hard to leave all that behind, man. You 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 work hard to establish yourself. In Colorado, everyone knows you. They see you. They can say, hey, you know what I'm saying? They recognize your voice. And then you come here and you got to start over. Yes. Only reason is because Colorado, you know, of course I was born there. But in the same sense, it's like, you know, I wanted something more. Like I wanted to transition into, you know, expressing my interests and talents as elsewhere. Mm-hmm. And plus, you know, living there for 12 years, I'm like, I need something new. Like I got to get out of here. Yeah. Plus, this is like college. Everybody wants to, you know, go out, travel, explore, do all of that. So, I looked at my options. New York was hell of expensive, so I said, <laughs> fuck New York. As much as I've been to Cali over and over, I wanted to establish myself in Cali, but looking at an apartment, <laughs> fuck Cali. Yeah. Fuck Florida. All the places I want to be is too <laughs> expensive. So, I'm looking at Texas. It was cheap. And, um, of course, I got my family down here. Yeah. And then um, I realized, you know, Austin has like a few things, like Dallas has everything. So I'm like, you know what, Texas, you good. I mean, here you're, you're close enough to all that stuff that you can get out there and make things happen. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, um, in your adult life, man, how does having autism affect you, if 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 at all? It does affect me sometimes. You know, I still need to learn like a few cues, like uh, what people are saying social boundaries and um it's still this feels like it helps but then sometimes i'm like you know there's a few things i'm still learning in the process yeah i mean that's that's good i mean as an adult you should never stop learning it's like um one of my favorite movies is is uh rain man are you, are you familiar with rain man of course. 
And so I watched Rayman as a child. I mean, Rayman came out, I think, in 88. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I was born in 80. So it's one of those movies I watched as a kid. And, of course, really didn't understand it, you know, uh, but loved the movie. Then as I got older, you know, I realized, like, damn, this is a really, really good movie and what it was about. Um, And I think, man, I was just always intrigued with the way um, his mind worked. You know what I'm saying? Like, the the counting of the cars, the math. Like, you know, I've, I've done a lot of research on children with autism and some of their uh quote unquote gifts you know the, like when you from my understanding when you're dealing with um uh, people who deal with autism it's things on this spectrum that is off the charts and modern science can't even understand how they can even do these things and then it's things on this end where they're like okay well they're not where we feel they should be but it's like the highs are so high and the things that some of their minds are capable of it's just it, it's it's amazing you know what i'm saying and i think that's why i ended up here man i've been th- thinking about this all week since we talked about it like i don't know why i'm drawn to this young man i just want to learn more about him you know what i'm saying like it started off on like the conversation that we was having <laughs> which i want to get into that too if you don't mind you know what oh, I'm saying? yeah because that was going to be funny as, as well man but um i didn't want it to just be about that you know what i'm saying i don't i don't want people to see this and think any of this is a joke except for the parts that we're trying to be funny, man. But um, I really am interested in being a friend, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you seem like a genuine dude, a uh, young dude trying to find himself. We got a passion in comedy. Uh, we have a passion for film and video skits like that, man. And I think that we can make some money. You know what I'm saying? I really think we I don't know if that's your goal. My goal is to make some money. I don't know what your goals are, you know, but I definitely think that we can make some money and have some fun. So now I want to talk about, uh, we'll talk about your uh, dating life, man. You know what I'm saying? We, mm. we, we trying to get Deshaun on the market, man. It's one of the most eligible bachelors in syntax. Nah, how many kids you got, Deshaun? Zero. No kids. You know what I'm saying? How many baby mamas? How many how many crazy women you got running around here, man? Zero. Zero. And you have a career, right? You know what I'm saying? You 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 pay your own bills, right? Yes, I do. You pay your own bills, you know. Uh so you know what's wrong with you, man? Why why you ain't got the dates? What's wrong with you? I asked myself the same question. <laughs> so so are you abusive to women? No. Okay. You don't put your hands on nobody. Mm-hmm. Do you talk crazy to women? Do you do you yell at them? Do you call them out their name? No. No. You seem like a young man who was raised with a lot of respect. Mm-hmm. A respectful dude. Do you go out uh, trying to find women? Or do you just go to work and come home? Kind of both. Okay. Kind of. When, when you go out to look for women, what type of places do you go to? Sometimes I go to the bars or clubs. Other times I want to be, you know, uh, the mature type, you know, libraries, uh, walks in the park types, uh, movie okay. theaters. Okay, okay. And so, how how long have you been in Texas now? About three, three years. Three years. Have you had any dates since you've been in Texas? A few. Okay, you have had a few dates. Tell me a little bit about those dates without telling me about those people. There was one girl who I met at a karaoke. She was uh she was she was black, so uh she wanted my number. So uh her friend asked me if she can have my number. So I said sure. So me and her decided to go on a date. So I'm like, okay, I can't get to know this girl. So how do I get her on a date? So I decided Starbucks. So I'm like, that's the perfect like perfect place to get to know her. So when we got there, it was a little bit slow and awkward, but yeah. But she thought it was awkward. I thought I was just you know, getting to know her. So then um, after that, I'm like, hey, do you want to continue? But then she just like said, uh, probably not, no. That's fucked up. That's her loss, bro. I mean, like, see, the thing is, like you said, she thought it was slow and awkward, but you like, I thought I'm just getting to know her, you know? Like uh, for me, I like to get to know, I like to get to know the lady. Like I like take her to coffee, you know, I'll take her like on a walk. Like, I want to take her someplace we get to talk and get to know her more. Yeah, exactly. So would you say you're looking for a woman for what? For companionship? You just trying to hit it and quit it? Or you 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 trying to form a friendship? Probably. That's a good question, but probably companionship, you know. I always tell myself I try to take after my grandparents because they've been together 55 years. 
I was playing all the artists, man, they do. They've been together for a long time. So I'm like, you know, I want to model myself after my grandparents. That's dope, man. That's dope. So at 26, man, you out here dating uh, or trying to date, looking for love. You trying to find companionship. And in your generation, man, these, these girls ain't looking for love, man. Have you met any women you felt trying to take advantage of you? Not that, no, no. Would you like to find a woman to take advantage of you? No, thank you. <laughs> that's good, that's good. How y'all doing, how y'all doing? My niece and my older brother. I'm, I parked in your spot, man? You good, bro. Okay, yeah. Like, Deshaun just told me to pull on up. Good. <laughs> I'm Diesel, man. I'm a, I'm a comic. Doing yeah, oh, you yeah, yeah. I wanted. That's where I met your brother at the open mic, man. Oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so where were we? Okay, uh, lick your fucking pain, shit. A real ch okay. So if if you can meet the perfect girl for you, tell me about her. What kind of qualities? Good personality. Okay. Athletic, okay. um, book and street smarts. Okay. Um, respects herself and respects others. And like that. I mean, these are amazing answers to shine. Like, my main thing is uh, I have her, uh, she's autistic and she functions like me, then I, that's my main Okay, thing. so, okay, now we get somewhere. Okay, so you will want. A high functioning autistic woman. Mm -hmm. Okay, well shit, that okay. Now, now I know what we're looking for. That, that's that's interesting. Okay. Um how do you think you would go about finding someone like that, man? Is it just like honestly, like, okay, if you say that you're looking for a woman who's a high functioning autistic, like how can you tell you you out at a, a bar, you you looking for certain characteristics or or is it a certain place that you think you could go to find this type of person? Both. Okay. All right. So that's kind of what I want to focus on, man, because I'm pretty sure it's the lady out there looking for you. You know what I'm saying? You you, you don't believe that, huh? <laughs> the way you looked at me was like, I don't know, man. I don't know if she's looking for me. Either or, but I ain't in no rush. I'm just going to enjoy life to the fullest. Okay, and so... If you if the lady out there come to me, then hey, I'll be ready. Okay, she can come to you, but you got to be available, man. She ain't gonna come to you in this living room. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You you, you got to go find her, man. Now I notice, man, when you get when you get a couple of them drinks in you, you turn to another person. You get a little tipsy. So. You get you get a little loose, and you be talking to all them ladies. And I do. So it's like now the whenever, thing is, whenever I drink, I turn. <laughs> Uh, overconfident type of guy. <laughs> I don't know if it's overconfident, but you, you turned into Denzel. You got this deep ass voice, and I I got the footage. Uh, you you walk by and you be you whisper something in the ear, and then just keep it moving. Like <laughs> you embarrassed, like because I got the footage. You didn't know I was recording the camera. <laughs> like <laughs> so, I'm saying, man, like. I don't know if your brother know the type of life you out there living at these open mics or not, man. Oh, well, he knows. Yeah. I tell him everything. You out there living your best life. And the funniest thing is when you sip on a drink because you you take it and, get, and keep on walking. <laughs> I'm a lightweight. I can't say. So, all right. So, man, we're going to figure out, man, where we can find the type of lady that you're looking for. You know what I'm saying? Because... My biggest issue, my biggest concern is we got to make sure we get these gold diggers away from you, bro. I'm telling you, bro, you're 26, no kids, you got a job, you own their radar. You got, you own their radar, you a good guy, so we got to make sure we you stay away from them. We're going to find you the type of woman you're looking for. You know what I'm saying? That's the purpose of this interview, man. We're we going to put Deshaun out there. Somebody going to see this video and be like, that's the one. You know what I'm saying? I hope you don't be picky and be like, I don't want her. Now, is there any... Physical characteristics, you know what I'm saying? You, you can be honest about what you like and what you don't like. I like them all, but you I like them all. I prefer, I prefer the light skins and the dark skins, you know, the ones, you know, uh, the black queens of the earth. Okay. The uh, slice of pie, apple yes. in the eye, chicken thigh, 
ham, spicy chicken and waffles, that type. Okay. Uh, and you like them thick? Yeah, I go for the thickness. <laughs> you go for the thickness. Huh? He said light skin or dark skin, ladies. He just, but, but it got to be a black woman, right? Or albino, you know, albino black too, so yeah. <laughs> he would take an albino black, but but she got to be black. Yeah. I guess I like them all, but I was like, my preference. Okay, so that's your preference, but you're not closing the door. You know what I'm saying? On a on a sexy, high functioning white chick. You know what I'm saying? That got everything that you're looking for. You, you're not closing the door on that either. Nope, I like them all. <laughs> all right, so. I even go for a little Hispanic or Japanese. Hispanic or Japanese. Mm -hmm. One will cut you. Actually, both will cut you. You know what I'm saying? If, if, you, if you're loving them right. You know what I'm saying? So that's the goal. So, man, that's, that's, that's dope, man. I think we got enough. We got about. You know, have 30 minutes of footage. I'm going to edit some of this, you know, when we get and start working on what we want to do. I appreciate your time, Mr. King. Drop your uh, your so social media, your Instagram, all that, in case anybody watching and want to find you. The Sean King, that's D-A-S-H-O-N, and King K-I-N-G, that's my Facebook name. I also have a page that says just my first name, The Sean. My Instagram is King May Cry 2022 and my YouTube is just my name, Deshaun King. Awesome, awesome, man. I'm the incomparable Diesel Greaser. We check y'all next week.